All right, so we have Buck 10. So are you excited to be here in Houston performing tonight? Oh yeah, man, this is, a, this is my debut Houston opportunity. Um, I'll be playing with Star Monster as direct support, so I'm uh, super excited. Funny enough, I um, actually DM'd him on SoundCloud, okay. and that's how I uh, start talking to him. Um, and then we met at uh, Wakan Fest and uh, hung out for a few hours and talking about uh, our collab that we're working on. Okay. Um, so I'm excited to hang again, you know. Uh, it's gonna be second time we've got to chill, and then this time it's actually gonna be a show, so pretty excited. I mean, yeah, that sounds like super lit, and I love that kind of like down-home energy, kind of like just kind of shooting him a message he was able to answer back, so. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's funny too, because it's like I, people, People are always kind of scared to like hit up people that are bigger than them. Yeah, of course. And I was a little bit nervous too, but then I hit him up and I wasn't really expecting a reply. And he was super cool about it, you know? So um, it, that's just kind of how the relationship grew from there. And then we met at Wakan and um, just clicked, you know? Definitely. I mean, that'll make sense. I mean, well, what brought you to the scene? Like, what got you here? Like, DJing, uh, just being in the scene in general, I guess. Uh, I think my earliest earliest memories were probably DJing in my uh, in my house in Covington. Okay. Uh, my buddy Hayden Neister, he uh, <laughs> he used to bring his little uh, tractor S two to my crib, and okay. we just DJ like just deep dubstep in right. my uh, in my garage, and then we threw some house parties and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And I just started DJing with him, and he kind of sh- sh- showed me the ropes as far as DJing goes, and then. Um, it kind of just took off from there a little bit, you know, because like I was also um, I was going to festivals all the time. I think my first festival was uh, EDC Orlando okay. 2012, right. uh, my first full EDM festival. Mm-hmm. And then um, so and it was about the same time that we were learning to DJ. And so I just did it for fun for a while. Mm-hmm. And then um, I DJed for about probably about two years or so. Uh, and then I really started taking it a little bit more seriously, and then yeah. I started making my own music. Uh, with my buddy Don Peyote, uh, one of my best friends, he definitely helped me like kickstart my career. Yeah. Like um, we made a bunch of songs together. He taught me how to produce, how to get my song sounding cleaner, all that stuff. So um, those are two of my buddies that really you know helped kickstart it. Got it. Um, so that's that's kind of pretty much how I got started. Yeah, so that's the road. Okay, so then uh, why the name Buck Ten? Man, there ain't nothing really too special about it. Okay. Funny enough, it's uh, <laughs> I was I was doing this DJ competition in uh, in Mandeville, Louisiana, and it was just some little bar, and it was first, it was like I think the winner won like a bottle of Jameson or something, okay. and literally like an hour long uh, session with the DJ who put it on, like to learn how to produce. And I didn't even produce at the time, right? So I was just a DJ, and I remember they were trying to choose how everyone would go that night, mm-hmm. right? Like the lineup. And they were like, okay, so we're going to draw out of a hat. And I was like, okay, cool. So they were like, put your DJ name in the hat. And I didn't even have one because I wasn't even that serious. And I had my best friend with me hanging out with me at the time. And he goes, goes, bro, like, you weigh about a buck ten. So you might as well just just go with buck ten, bro. (laughs) And I was like, "Uh, okay. And then then it just kind of stuck, man. I don't know. And people just started calling me that. And then, like, it just... And then I, it's funny, as I thought about doing a rebrand, like a few gotcha. years later, I was like, I don't know if it really works for me. But I mean, at the time, everyone was just calling me Buck 10. Like, right. I didn't hear my name for like two or three years in college. <laughs> right, gotcha. they, because, And I was like, you know what? Everyone knows me as that. I'm just going to stick with it and just work with it. But uh, that's how I came about. I feel like uh, everyone's got the little goofy story and that, that was pretty much mine, you know? Right, right. I mean... For me, just talking to you right now, Buck 10 matches your energy. Like, I don't know what it is, but it's like, when I heard it, I thought there might have been a story to it, but like, honestly, it kind of, yeah. like, I, I get it. Well, it's, it's funny, because like, when I was first thinking about like, my first um, like logo and emblem and all that stuff, I was thinking about doing like a deer, because I, I am a country boy. Gotcha. So, um, like, my family is very country, and um, I'm more of the city boy of the family. Uh, but I thought about doing that, and then I started looking around other TJs, like, wait, Minnesota has a deer, too. I was like, I can't just rip Minnesota. Right. So um, the evolution of Buck 10, it took a little while. It really kind of took off, like, my logo and stuff, mm-hmm. like, all the new rebranding. 
was uh, with my when I met up with a, a visual artist, uh, Alex Ferrero, mm -hmm. and uh, he's done stuff for like Lucid um, and, and a bunch of other DJs like Downlink and uh, like videos for them. So once I met him, it kind of just he just solidified my brand. Right. I basically I really didn't know what I wanted for an emblem. I knew what I didn't want, if that makes sense. Yeah, I didn't want like some heavy dub steps, like looking visuals or like, so I, I just, I knew what I didn't want and I told him what I didn't want for about an hour on the phone. And then he was like, all right, I think I got you. Cause he's like, he's like, you know, I, I know you like psychedelic bass music. So, and then he sent me the, the first renditions. I think we like literally changed the B and then moved the C over a little bit. And that was it. Like it right, was exactly. perfect. perfect. So. It was just kind of funny how it came together. It, it took a little while, but it did. And working with him, it's uh, it's definitely solidified my brand. Okay, I mean, I, that's Lynn. I and a big shout out to him. Yes. So, um, Nectar is your most listened track on SoundCloud. I looked. So, like, how do you feel about the track itself? If you could um, expound on it. So uh, that was kind of a tribute to um, Bass Nectar at the time. Like, he was probably one of my favorite artists before you know all the drama happened <laughs> you know so um <laughs> yeah. and and i really like that style of music and honestly that's like where my in influence comes from gotcha and there's a lot of new artists that i listen to now because of all that stuff but like fryer immersive uh smoke land okay. produces some really good songs like that gotcha. raven schoon mm -hmm. so that was kind of my that was kind of my influence and it was kind of a tribute to him at the time right um because i've always wanted to make like like beautiful like good melodies but also have like that heavy style right, too exactly. and i think that's uh kind of what i'm trying to go for with my brand exactly. is to be able to do both and be flexible um so it, it's it's actually a song that i mixed and mastered myself which i was i was wow. actually thinking about getting it remixed and mastered because at the time i didn't really know what i was doing as much exactly. which just sounds good which is funny it kind of leads me to another thing because like People always think about like people always get like really nitpicky about mixes, but honestly, it it doesn't really matter. Like I think about it sometimes. Like some of my most played songs, like Nectar, Champion Sound, were songs that I did not have the nicest mix on. Right. It was like kind of quick. I just need to release something. It was a good song. So I've thought about going back to do it, but it's just it's funny because there's always that debate like, oh, the mix isn't good, blah blah blah. But um, my best songs, honestly, clearly, are the ones that weren't even mixed well. Right, exactly. It's just, it's funny how it works, you know? It's always like, it's always the tracks that do really well okay. that you don't expect to do well. You're like, ah, no one's going to like that. You're like, yeah. And then the songs you think are going to do really fucking well, they, they're just like, ah, you know? It's, I, it's so funny how it works. I want to say there's something to that as far as like, um, I call it like the artist's hill. Where right. like we'll climb to this top, and then like we're looking down, like, "Hey guys, like I got this really cool thing," but it's right. like it's too far for them to like see it or appreciate it. But when you kind of like do something, you kind of put it down the ground, and they're able to kind of pick it up and kind of pass it around. Right. Now they're able to actually appreciate it for what it is. Like with the things that a lot of people think is good when they're like deep into something, like mm -hmm. for you, uh, for instance, like producing and DJing. Right. You have to have. A, an appreciation for producing and DJing to get what makes it special. Right. <laughs> yeah. You got to know both. Um, right. Exactly. And honestly, uh, like knowing both, it, it really helps. Like even like just like mixing, like whenever I make a new song, like I try to mix it into other songs. And if it doesn't, if like it doesn't fit right, then I know that I got to go back and fix something. So honestly, like doing both, be, like being a being in production and mixing is just like so beneficial yeah. because you learn like because i have songs that i know that i i could have probably written better i just didn't know how at the time like i could probably mix them better or um make them better structurally for mixing purposes so right. um you just learn a lot doing both and, and that's kind of why i started producing was because i dj'd for a while and i was like okay well how do i set myself apart right it's production you gotcha. know um and i never really necessarily wanted to be a producer at first i just wanted to dj and have fun with my buddies but mm -hmm. then you know I, I like i really fell in love with it really and then um one thing led to another and i just started hanging out with the right people surround myself with like you know good producers and then it you know it rubs off you know you, you surround yourself with people that you want to be like yeah uh, you know to bring you up so right. um 
you always want to have someone else smarter in the room so like they can teach you stuff like yeah, you don't want to always be the smart one in my opinion yeah definitely like, <laughs> definite some things to live by i mean like with that like when you say like people in the room is like so like who's your favorite artist like who would you want to share a room with uh if you had a chance to right now uh i would say probably probably smoke land and raven schoon are probably my top two okay um I, I've always, I, I really, I just like their music. It's yeah. really smooth. I like how Raven Schoon has like really pretty melodies, but also um, just some, you know, heavy hitters too. And I feel yeah. like, uh, I feel like we would work well together on track. So those are probably two that I'd, I'd really mess with, you know? Okay. Um, but yeah, I think I think that'd be probably my choice. I want to say Smoke Lands in Houston tonight, actually. Yes, they are. Yeah, they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. they play the High Rollers tour. Yeah, right. I saw that. Yeah, drum, they're doing the drum and bass, um, drum and bass event. Yeah, yeah. with Kumari on. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say because uh, it's a venue that I work at. Usually, I think that's the like they're actually throwing it tonight. Oh shit! Uh, okay. Yeah, but I came out here to help you know Trippy out and everything right. like that. So yeah, definitely like. We're going to get our own score here. Right. Um, so with that, uh, when you're not DJing, partying, and just traveling around the country, what are you doing in your free time? Um, lately in Austin, um, I moved to Austin because I like the mixture of city and I like the mixture of outdoors. Like I, I do a lot of just like hiking and uh, going out to the river and the parks and stuff. Yeah. Because where I lived in Sulphur, Louisiana, there really wasn't much to do. Gotcha. It was basically the casinos. Mm, and yeah. the casinos right. so like now that i've got like all this outdoor stuff like i and i work at home so i'm a like a, a tire salesman so i work out of my apartment so when i'm not working i'm just trying to get out the house right you know what i mean like i i, I feel cooped up sometimes mm -hmm. because of working at home so i do a lot of that i do a lot of like paddle boarding and um Honestly, on my, my weekends when I got nothing going on, I'm a big I'm a big video game nerd, bro. Gotcha. Like I, I I'm a big nerd, and then uh, so I'll either be doing that or working on new music. Um, so I do different stuff like that. Okay, so like uh, so I heard you that you have the day job. Uh, is the goal to become doing this professionally, like full time, completely, or yeah? So. I, at some point, I'd like to transition. You know, yeah. uh, I make really good money with. Uh, it's my father. It's a family-owned business. Gotcha. I'm basically a tire broker so. for like large construction stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and my flex, my my schedule is whatever I make it. You gotcha. know. So it's it's super easy. I can literally just take off whenever. Uh, but I want to be able to like once I transition to a full time DJ, I just need to make sure the money's there. You know. Yeah. Because like right now with what I'm doing, um, it supplements my my just being bucked in yeah because it's, it's just uh most people don't realize how expensive it is to yeah. be an artist you yeah. know because you got to pay for artwork you got to play pay for a video to to catch eyes because no one wants just to look at like an artwork you know album exactly. artwork you got to draw attention you got to right. stand out you got to compete with the major labels so mm. then you got to pay for you know mixing and mastering if you do that um uh, promotion so it, it all it's i mean it could be you know anywhere from 600 to a thousand dollars a song if you want it to be yeah exactly. to, for it to do good so and and you know, uh right now like it's the demand for music is so high right it's like you gotta especially to compete with the big guys you gotta be releasing at least like one song every month or two months yeah and it's 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 expensive yeah. so um i'm hoping you know there are different ways to to make money off of your brand and i'm hoping um in the near future I won't have to work, you know, um, mm -hmm. but right now it's it's not like a burden or anything. I actually really like what I do. Right. You know, so um, at the same time, I, I might not ever stop. <laughs> yeah. Because it, like I said, it's you could just pick up and go. Yeah, like the way you explained it, it, it kind of almost felt like you didn't have to. Like personally, like with the camera work and all that, I want to like to do that full time. Yeah. Like, for example, but then like I work at Amazon. So right. like, people like know that I probably like wouldn't want to do it. But I told them, like, you know, as far as companies are concerned if i had to work for another global corporation amazon definitely allows me to do this like i got here at two because of amazon right like if it was another company they're probably just like no you can't do that so it's right. like <laughs> i get you so it's like if it's your family's business and you're doing well and it pays well i don't see why you would just you know exactly yeah <laughs> it, it would have to be i'd have to have a significant increase of payment but exactly which at, honestly at my stage of my career you don't really make any money it's it's like I mean, maybe there are ways. I just haven't found them yet. Right. Um, I know a lot of, like, the best way, in my opinion, that I've found so far for, for fans to, like, to help me financially is buying merch. Gotcha. It really is the best because okay. um, 
Because like the streams on Spotify or SoundCloud, they just really Couple don't cents. make you any yeah. money. It's like point mm -hmm. zero 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 three cents yeah. per play, and unless you're getting millions of plays, you know, I think a million plays is like eleven hundred bucks. Or yeah. something. it's like something like it's not as much as you think. Right, right. So um, the merch is the biggest help, and I just actually did my first run of merch of jerseys. They got four different color schemes. Okay. Um, and they are being made by Elevate 808. Okay. Um, it's a pretty notorious um, uh, brand and um, merch company. Mm -hmm. So they're based out of Colorado. Okay. They did, they actually, last year they did all of Wakan's jerseys besides like the, the special stuff. Okay. Like the premium stuff or whatever. But uh, so I'm, I'm actually waiting on that to come in. I got gotcha. a bunch of pre orders. So I'm really excited. And I was, uh, I got a bunch of, pre-orders that I wasn't really expecting, you know? Mm -hmm. I was expecting maybe 10, 15 people buy it, you know? Right, exactly. And then I had like probably triple that. So gotcha. it, it was, it's cool. And, um, but yeah, that's the best way to support an artist in my opinion. Yeah. Um, besides just showing up to their events, yeah. you know? I mean, yeah, I mean, that definitely like, it makes sense. Like I'm gonna have to go in and, and stand me one of those. Because just, cause your logo, like you said, it is actually like really cool. Mm -hmm. And it caught my eye when I saw it. So everything you said there, like, it actually spoke to me. I was like, yeah, because when I saw you, I was like looking through everybody's stuff. I was like, oh, I really like his logo and everything like that. So if that's plastered on a jersey, right. I'm out to wear that. Uh, I'll show you. <laughs> yeah. I'll show you a little bit, bro. It's Definitely. cool, man. I got some black and gold for, for New Orleans. I got a few different color schemes. So okay. I'll show you. Okay, black and gold actually sounds really cool. Exactly. Yeah, so <laughs> that's like, why I'm I did really, it. Like, I'm really sitting there thinking. So, uh, so, I mean, I guess I'm pretty much wrapped up. Is there anything you want to say to the people before we come? completely cut uh I, I guess i'd just like to say like thank you for everybody who's ever supported me who's um sent my music um to other people who's commented on my statuses liked my stuff like all that stuff it it, it, it even it only takes a second even just commenting a small thing it really helps because uh it all adds up dude so just anyone that's listening to my music i just like to say thank you um, it's been a long journey and I hope it's going to be a lot longer. I hope I can stay and, uh, be relevant in the scene. And I hope I can continue to rise and produce good music for you guys. Cause at the end of the day, all I want to do is just, uh, provide quality. I'd rather provide quality than quantity. So, um, thank you guys. That's all I gotta say. And we thank you. Thank you, Buck 10 for doing this for us. And, uh, Sir. I hope you have a good night at the show. Thank you, man. Thank you. All right.